my great honor and fortune to have this opportunity to be with all of you tonight. This event, which we have called Rising India, is an attempt to share with the people of India the great treasure that is the foundational culture and legacy of this nation. I was born in the United States of America and I saw such wealth prosperity, technology, controlled traffic, so many things that in those days in the 1950s and 60s were not so familiar here in India. But I also witnessed that there was something seriously missing. Inner fulfillment and a deep purpose in life. I heard at that time from the civil rights movement's leader that if you do not have an ideal you're willing to die for, you do not have anything very meaningful to live for. I wanted to find that ideal. I was looking for a spiritual connection which was so deep and so real beyond sectarian, arrogant conceptions of religion. A philosophy and a lifestyle that re can reconnect me with my own true self, with God, and with the world. Like many people from the West, we looked to India for these treasures. When I first came in 1970, I saw poverty and disorganization that I could have never imagined. But I also saw that beneath the surface, India was the cultural, culturally wealthiest place I had ever been and seen. And I traveled across the globe. And it was the first place in my life that I actually felt that I was home. So much people of India are looking to the West for hope. But more and more people in the West are looking to India for hope. And what is that hope? This, the parade that we had 
in this area of Mumbai today, the Ratiyatra, is a festival of hope. It has been celebrated for thousands of years in the holy city of Puri. About 500 years ago, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed in a profound way through his, his words and through his example the importance to the world of this message of this festival. And our beloved Gurudev, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, when he came to the West, he especially established this Ratiyatra festival in practically every major city of the world. Why? Lord Chaitanya, according to the scriptures, is Krishna himself. Lord Jagannath was teaching himself in the role of a devotee the unifying message of Ratiyatra. Jagannath means the Lord of all living beings in all of the universe. Jagannath is Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> he did not speak a sectarian conception that divides humanity. Aham bija prata pita the one Supreme God, or Krishna, is the father and mother of all living beings. Vidyavanaya sampani brahmani gavihastini suni jaiva swapaki japhandita samadarshan. That actual wisdom is not just how much data and information we collect in the memory of our brain. It's the ability to see every living being with equal vision. Whether one is black or white or red or yellow or brown in color, male or female, rich or poor, from the East or from the West, or whatever religion or irreligion, the Atma, the living force, the soul within everyone is a child of God. And on that level, we are all brothers and sisters. And to the degree we realize the concept of yoga is to harmonize the body, the words, the mind with the soul, the atma. And then to unite the atma with the paramatma, our supreme father and mother. And when that is established, then we understand and realize our relationship with the environment, with nature, and with every living being. You cannot love God and not love everyone. You cannot love God and disrespect or exploit the gifts that God gives us. The example is giving if you water the root of a tree. That water naturally extends to every part of the tree. The flowers, the twigs, the leaves, the branches. 
And similarly, when we connect to our own Atma, which is Sachit Ananda, eternal, full of knowledge, full of bliss, when we connect to our true self, we realize we are beyond birth and we are beyond death. We are illuminated with the knowledge that is within us. And that knowledge is what enables us to understand our relationship with everyone through Lord Jagannath, through God. And as the water on the root of a tree extends to every part, our love, our respect naturally flows to all. And it is expressed through our life through seva. Seva means to overcome selfishness and arrogance and find joy in serving with compassion. This is the greatest necessity in our world today, is simple human compassion. There's really no sort of shortage of anything except that. The human intelligence is incredible. We can create computer technology. We can create spaceships that go into outer space. We can create entertainment systems with special effects that are incredible, impossible. We can create cell phones. You don't even know where the person is when you call him or her. It's unbelievable. With that intelligence, human beings could learn to adjust, even in the states of the greatest challenges, disasters, and mishaps, how to adjust to be instruments of compassion to actually help all of our brothers and sisters, leaving out none. And when there isn't this compassion, when people who naturally thrive on love and care, because that's the nature of the soul, to love and care and to feel the love and care of God, of Krishna, and of all others, then there are so many ways that we retaliate. There's enough food, there's enough water, there's enough justice, there's enough law enforcement, there's enough money, there's enough everything if we learn the art of compassion. But for that compassion to be deep and real, it has to be for the body, mind, and soul. Jagannath comes out of his temple to give his darshan and smile upon everyone without discriminating who is fit or unfit. Just as the sun shines its nourishing, life-giving rays upon everyone. When Sri Chaitanya began the parade of the Ratayatra. He stood before Lord Jagannath and offered a simple prayer. And in this prayer, he's opening the door to every other true spiritual realization. Anyone can talk about religion and loving God and all of this stuff. 
but real religious experience. The awakening of the soul, the awakening of love. He taught us how it all begins with a simple prayer. He said, I am not this body or all the designations of this body that create so much quarrel, hypocrisy, and selfishness and ego. Gopi Bharatur Padakamala Yora Dasa Dasa Das Anodas. My true identity is I am the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant of the Lord of Gopis, Sri Krishna. The greatest joy is when we please Krishna through our service to the world that he has given us and the children that are eternally loved by him. That means everyone and everything. The Anamrita, this project of feeding the little children who are in the schools where children are not properly nourished, and so many of them do not even bother to go to school because they're hungry. That is how we got involved. We were told by a minister that the main reason for illiteracy in India is hunger. People would ra children would rather beg and get some food and money than sit in school without concentration, suffering. People of all varieties of social status came forward. Monks, sadhus, business people, politicians, engineers, farmers. Let us do what we can to help. It's the spirit of compassion. But what are we educating them in? Once they're well nourished and eating. If we don't nourish their minds with values, then they're going to suffer terribly. In my life in the world, I see rich people suffering as much as poor people, just in a different way. Hunger of the heart. And ultimately, para upakar, when we nourish people into their true identity and the values and character and method by which they could reconnect to their eternal souls, tap in to the unlimited reservoir of love and compassion and happiness that is within them and is beyond birth, beyond dis old age, disease, or death. Then they become instruments of that love, instruments of that compassion. Through whatever they do, whether they're politicians, engineers, 
farmer, scientist, housewife, educators, or swamis. The Bhagavad Gita teaches a simple truth. Yat karoshi yadashnasi yaj johoshi dadasiyat. Whatever you do, in whatever occupation, in whatever setting, in whatever role, in whatever relationship, offer it in a spirit of love to God. This is bhakti. It's accessible, practical, doable to everyone at all times, everywhere. And Lord Chaitanya, he presented it in such a simple way that the greatest aspiration that we should have in our life and the greatest aspiration we should inculcate within our children and the younger generation is the value of seva, service. Selfish desire is like fire. The more you feed it, the more it needs. If you feed a fire millions of liters of petrol, it will, it will need million more liters. because greed can never be satisfied. Why? Because it's a completely unnatural foreign concept to the heart. The heart yearns and longs for only one thing, to serve with love. In giving, we receive. And anyone who's really tried it on the spiritual platform knows it's true. But when we're disconnected from who we really are and what we really want, then in this world of illusion like a dream, birth after birth after birth, we're struggling and striving to find happiness and love. And as long as we're in that state, we just keep hurting each other. Through our family relationships, through our social relationships in race, in nations, and even in religion. Srila Prabhupada, our Gurudev, he said, true dharma, true religion, true yoga is that which awakens the propensity within us to live in a spirit of service, compassion, and love for God. As the servant of the servant of the servant, that means all others. Lord Chaitanya offered this prayer. And then in that spirit, he induced all the devotees to chant the holy names. This Harinam Sankirtan is the most simple, accessible, and according to all the Vedic literatures, the most powerful way of awakening this spiritual awareness within our hearts. And anyone can do it. Little children are not listening to all this philosophy I'm speaking. But if we have kirtan, they'll come and dance and chant happily. It's so simple. But all forms of yajna, all forms of meditation, all forms of, of tapasya, all forms of, of, of study, deep study, of Shastras, the conclusion of all of them is realized. 
if we can connect to our old soul through the chanting of these beautiful mantras. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And Lord Chaitanya set the stage in a very special way. Because right when he was chanting this prayer, before the parade actually began, which is a parade of bringing our own hearts and our own souls back home within ourselves to Jagannath. Srila Prabhupada translated Ratiyach in this simple way. It's the process of bringing our heart, bringing God back into our lives. There was a king. His name was Pratapa Rudra. And in those days, kings were extremely powerful, extremely wealthy, extreme, extremely influential. They didn't have to campaign every couple years for a re-election. They were kings for life. And whatever they decided was the law for the whole kingdom. It's very rare to find good leaders. But this king, he came before Jagannath and came before about a million people who were in the street. And from his heart, he wanted to express his true feelings. And with a broom, he swept the road. He swept the road by declaring before God that I am the servant of the servant of your servants. Sweeping a road is a very simple task. And he was in the highest position, but he found the greatest pleasure doing this simple task because he did it with devotion. He wasn't only sweeping for Jagannath because if you sweep for Jagannath, you have to sweep for all Jagannath's children. You can't love God and neglect anyone. He was sweeping the road for everyone. And he was giving an example for everyone. And Lord Chaitanya, who was a sannyasi, he would never meet people who were in very high powerful conditions. But when he saw this, and Ishwara Sarva Bhutanam Hridesha Arjunatishtiti. The Lord is within the heart of every living being. He doesn't see just what we do. He sees our actual intention. And he saw the sincerity of the king. He was really earnestly didn't want any position except to be the servant of the servant of the servant. And that's the mood in which he ruled the kingdom. And that's why it was the happiest kingdom. There was no such thing as poverty. Everyone cared for each other because everyone was cared for by each other. How did that kingdom happen? Because the king, from his heart of heart, felt himself the servant of the servant of the servant. All property, Sarva Loka Maheshwaram, is God's property. I'm just a caretaker. All my citizens and everyone else are God's children. I'm just their caretaker. 
He was the servant of everyone. And he taught us in whatever position, this is what we should aspire for. Yes, in the world there are so many challenges and there are so many necessities. But our spiritual connection comes when we really teach our children by our example that this is the highest value to aspire for. To love and to serve. Lord Chaitanya blessed King Pratapurudra with the highest spirits, spiritual perfection. Why? Because he sincerely was sweeping the street. And later on when Lord Chaitanya asked him, who are you? He spoke from his heart. He said, I am the servant of the servant of your servants and my only aspiration is to be the servant of the servant of your servants. This Ratiatra parade is a beautiful celebration open for everyone of all races, of all colors, of all religion, of all social backgrounds to unite as true brothers and sisters in this principle that we are all children of the same God and we are all living in this sacred environment with all the gifts that God has given us and let us respect the treasure of life by respecting each other. In my life I saw so much hypocrisy and I saw so much strife and trouble on so many levels. But my guru, Srila Prabhupada, through his example and through his words, he imbibed with me limitless hope that we, each and every one of us, however insignificant, could really make a difference if we connect to the power of God. And every one of us can do that in any situation. My dear sister, Brajalila is with us today. We were together when her guru and my best friend, Bhakti Tirta Swami Maharaj, was in his last days of living within that body. He had cancer. And I love to tell this story because it transformed to such an incredible degree how I see life. One day, his cancer was causing such pain. It seemed like it just penetrated to every tissue, every cell through his bones. His body was trembling. And each day we would speak spiritual subjects to help each other to love God, the most important thing. When you're about to die, or when somebody you know and love is about to die, you're not very concerned with the gossip of this world. You're not so concerned with what we consume ourselves with in ordinary daily life. We really focus on what is truly important, what is truly beyond birth and beyond death. Our, our, lo our love for God and our love for each other, that's all that matters. So we would have these talks that brought our hearts to become one. But on this day, I could see he wasn't able to concentrate. So I just chanted, 
this maha mantra hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare and we were sitting on a chair he was on one i was on another and holding hands as i was chanting he was chanting he smiled his smile seemed to light up the whole room his eyes glistened with joy he smiled so happily as he shook his head like this and said it doesn't get any better than this tears of joy were streaming from his eyes in happiness and he said it about 3 times it doesn't get any better than this he's going to die in a couple days he's in intolerable pain he can't even move by himself and he's saying it doesn't get any better than this i asked him what do you mean <laughs> and he said i am feeling krishna's presence like i've never experienced before as i'm chanting his name and i feel his love and i know where i'm going and i want to go there it doesn't get any better than this he meant it and he said to me this cancer is such a blessing because people come to me now and they feel so sorry for me that they listen to everything i say and i have the power to transform their lives like i've never done before he said all that really matters is how we could serve and if i could serve better in this position this is my greatest joy it doesn't get any better than this and with tears of ecstasy he loudly cried out hare krishna hare krishna 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 hari 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 rama hari rama 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 hari hari now we don't have to be in such a situation to understand that but that's our real wealth it's inside of us and nothing can disturb it nothing can take it away when we actually make that connection and that is the great heritage of india the sages the rishis the vedic scriptures the system of yoga the process of sanatan dharma satsang to associate with holy people who inspire us sadhana to seriously take our spiritual practice and put some side some time aside every day to reconnect especially through this chanting of the divine mantras of god's names and sadachar to live with respect with integrity in a mood of service to earn with integrity to spend with compassion anyone could do it everyone could do it this is the calling of the lord within our hearts rising of india is through philosophy through literature through art through social interactions even through science through technology through politics through every aspect of life to live with integrity and compassion through reconnecting with god 
and there's nowhere in the world where there is such a treasure house, such a vast treasure house, that literally includes all other philosophies and spiritual systems that can actually change the world more than our great land of India. And this is what Ratayatra is reminding us how to reconnect and be happy. And there's something much greater than reconnecting and be happy. Reconnecting, being happy, and then having no greater goal in life than to make others happy. Thank you very much.